coming off of turn number four, your 2017 points champion, Matt Morrow at Knoxville. My expectations were high. You know, we, uh, we have a great team here, and this was the first year with my dad back in the, in the pit area with me turning the wrenches. So I know my dad is, it makes me real comfortable in the race car, uh, more mentally than probably anything. And we went in there knowing we had a chance to win a championship, doing the best we could to win that championship also. I've never came out of the box real good at Knoxville Raceway. I struggled the first night out. Usually it takes me about three weeks to get going. Never happy with running fifth in a future or even seventh in qualifying. So the finishes were, were fine. We, we went home that night with our head hell high. We weren't disappointed and no one was mad at anybody. It also was a learning curve for us. With my dad turning the wrenches, there was some stuff I had been doing to the car for the last five, six years that you know, he didn't like necessarily, but he didn't want to change. He wanted to just make little changes. So we kind of got a baseline that first night. We were trying new stuff for time trials and we thought we made a good gain in time trials that night, but what we gained in time trials, we definitely lost in the future. Uh, I was struggling with the track being, have a nice wet bottom and a real nice moisture strip down there to where you can flat foot it around the bottom. I'm typically not a bottom racer. I like it up on the top, uh, running the rim around there. But I did struggle that night. You know, starting third, we definitely had high hopes of being able to contend for a win and ended up seventh that night. You know, still, no one's mad at anybody. We do this for fun. But it just was not as, uh, as chatty and as fun of a night heading home that night. So we set quick time the third night out, and that was that was definitely our goal, and that's what we had been working for, is to get that thing to run a little better in time trials, get the car to work better. Um, the downfall to quick time is the invert some nights can bite you on being quick time, but you definitely want to be in the top five, top six every single night. It's big point nights when you can get quick times. So our fourth night out, we finally got some things going our way. Um, we were better. We got the time trial in where we felt like we were good every time and it didn't matter when we went out. We could go out early, we could go out late and we still were good time trial. We started front row of that feature along Sawyer and Sawyer and I had a great battle. Um, I think Sawyer led a couple laps, I led a couple laps, but then I ended up taking off and getting away from Sawyer just a little bit and I think I led up to lap 12 in that feature and restart got me. I second guessed myself on the restart. You know, anytime Clint's starting right behind you, you know, it, it will psych yourself out sometimes. And you're second guessing yourself going into the corner if you need to go down and slide yourself. And I didn't. And Clint got by me. And then I lost my patience a little bit. I then started searching around. I wasn't wasn't satisf satisfied with running second in that feature. So I moved around to see if there was anything I could do to catch back up with Clint. And ended up even losing another spot. I should have just kept my head straight and did what I knew I could, and, but Cap Henry got me there towards the end. We were fourth in time trials there and made the invert, started in a good position in the feature, was racing back there somewhere around that fifth, sixth spot. Uh, Jamie Ball and I always race hard and race very good with each other. And uh, I was unfortunately just a victim of someone spinning out and got me pinched up into the wall. There was nowhere I could go. Uh, ran out of real estate there and got upside down and actually tore up our car pretty good. So, you know, we, we knew we were fast. We knew we were good. We tore up a race car and, you know, it's one of those deals. We, we know we're going to tear up race cars. We know it's going to happen. When we came out of that night, 258 points behind Clint, it changed our whole year. It absolutely, we changed everything we did. We decided at that point, we have nothing to lose. Let's go out and try and win some races. Let's, let's go away from the comfortable setup we've had on the car. My dad, my dad wanted to try some things and I gave him free reign to do whatever he wanted to on the car. And he did. And obviously with the outcome that happened, it worked. We started getting better throughout the year at that point. Bad luck then happened for Clint. 
and a few of the other cars. Uh, I know Nate was involved with that accident a little bit, just spinning to miss it. Um, Nate was fortunate enough to get his spot back, but it, there were a few cars that were taken out in that and it, it cut the point gap in half. We were able to make up a lot of ground that we had lost, but what it did do is it just boost our confidence. It just put a carrot out in front of us, knowing that, that Superman can, can be hurt there. I mean, Clint's, Clint hadn't experienced DNF like the rest of us had. Clint's always seemed to be able to make it through a year with, with very little DNFs, if, if any. So knowing that we could gain that many points you know, it, it definitely changed everything also. It changed everybody's outlook, everybody's more positive in the pit area. So the next week had a great start. Uh, we start on the front row with John Agan. John Agan's always hard uh, to, to outrun. He, he's always got his stuff working good and he's always fast, elbows up. John and I had a great race going on and I didn't end up getting by John. Uh, led the feature for a little while and then of course here came that blue 40 car and he got me, he got me, he snookered me, he was able to get by and you know, I sat there and ran second to him and we got into lap traffic and we got in pretty heavy lap traffic and uh, there was few laps left, maybe four laps left in that feature and I was in striking distance with Clint and you know, definitely had our confidence up that we're running with Clint there and I got a good run on the bottom coming out of two and I knew I had to get to the top to be able to get into three on the outside because I was terrible on the bottom going into three. And I was easing my car up there and I pinched Clint. I actually got my right rear into his left front. Um, I turned it down. I knew I got into him instantly. Couldn't see him. These are sprint cars with the wings and with the seats the way they are. Unless someone's clear up alongside you, you never can see him. I knew I was going to be shutting the door up there. I just didn't know I was going to shut it like that. Clint and I touched and Clint still beat me into turn three. And Clint went on and won the feature. and. Um, you know, it was an unfortunate night. It was definitely nothing that we never tore up anything. Neither one of us tore up our race cars. It, we could have, and it was something to where it just shows how hard we're out there racing, trying to win these races. And, you know, Clint and I were perfectly fine with each other after the races there. It was uh, it was just a hard racing deal and definitely nothing intentional on, on my end. If I could have squeezed in front of Clint there, I won the race. I, he wasn't going to be able to pass me. I was getting through those lap cars so much better, but I had to go to the bottom, go get into three, and it just killed all my momentum at that point. The first of July um, started off another good night with fourth quick time. Uh, went out there, had a great start to the feature, started sixth, got up to third pretty quickly. Brooke Tattnall, I kept running up to Brooke and kept falling back a little bit. And, on the last lap, I do, I remember getting by Brooke. On the very last lap, I believe I even got by him in uh, three, going into three, and got me another podium finish. I think I got second that night. The week of July 8th, we qualified third in the time trials. And again, another solid qualification for us. Started sixth in the future there. We got going good. The car was excellent. Uh, really one of the better cars I had all year long. And got up to, got by Jamie Ball early in the feature. Then ended up getting by Nate Van Haften about halfway through. Uh, setting myself up, sitting there third. And the guys, uh, Clint Garner and Calvin Landis had kind of set out a little bit on me, but I was reeling them in slowly. It seemed like I was catching them, but those guys had a heck of a battle going on, and we were into some pretty good lap traffic at that time. And next thing I know, I saw the two of them uh, spinning around, coming out of two, and uh, I know Clint got upside down that night, and I snuck by and inherited the lead. It was unfortunate we didn't perform again that night. We were not able to close it out. Uh, we had a restart on the restart, was good, was real good. But I, my, my motor was just laying down a little bit on me. I just had a miss. I got a little too warm. It was a warmer night out and got the engine a little too hot and I couldn't take off on the restarts very well. So the first one, I, I kind of had to get a nice run at it, pick up the throttle right at the high fence and get going and uh, leave it to where they couldn't. Well, Jamie Ball saw that and we had a, immediately another restart, another red flag and a restart. And Jamie saw that and he did what he had to do. He lagged back and got a run on me. And it's exactly what he needed to do to, to be able to beat us that night. Because once I got going, that, our car was excellent. 
It just wasn't taking off real good on that start, and we ended up second to Jamie, and you know, we definitely were happy about that night. You know, would love to have won, but it was still another solid night. You know, that was, I believe, our fifth podium finish in a row, and another third quick. Just solid, good point nights. Uh, to be leading points at Knoxville Raceway with Clint behind you sucks, actually. I mean, it's, I have spent so much time out here in the shop. I spend a lot of time out here in the shop anyways, but I spent so much time checking everything over week in and week out because we could not afford to have another DNF. We never thought we could come from 280 points back to be leading points by 100. And it was a, it was a good position to be in. Now we knew that we, he had to come and beat us. And he was capable of doing it, obviously. He's, he's done it. He, he's always been able to, to not have to race those last few races very hard. He's always been leading points late in the season to where I mean, there's been a few years, I don't even know if he had to show up the last night. He could just, just not even come to the racetrack and win these things. So, you know, it, it's a position I don't think he had been in before, and it was awesome to be the one to put him in that position. On July 5th, or yeah, July 15th, we, we were able to gain more points, or not gain points, we just were not, we just had a good enough night, we didn't lose a lot of points that night. I do remember, I think we did lose a couple of points to Clint that night, but it was only a few, maybe two points. We went from quick time, gaining a little bit of points on him, to starting sixth, running fourth in the feature, and losing a couple of points to him. So now we still had a decent point lead, nothing to get comfortable with. You can't get comfortable, obviously, when you can change in one night 140 points, so. The pressure wasn't there. What had happened at that point is I had to go to my other engine. I needed to get this one engine, had enough nights on it to where it had to get pulled out, and it was the one I really liked. It's, it, it's really what I felt comfortable with. And we had to put another engine in, and it, we had put a camshaft in this engine just to, to try it out. And on the dyno, the thing was excellent on the dyno. It wasn't that good on the track. The thing just would not RPM up like we want it to. And what we're used to. So it, the car, we were having to change the car around a little bit. And, you know, we ran sixth. And with the sixth place finish, it's still decent for getting points. I believe we started inside the invert that night also. Uh, but we, we just were okay. Not as good as what we had been. I think they got balled up in front of me. A couple cars got together in front of me. Nothing major, and they all kept going, but it got me spooked. And when you're racing for points, you can't ball it up on the first lap. So, you know, at that point, we were maybe a little too cautious on the start of that feature and dropped back. So the last week of July there, uh, good night, lots of cars, if I remember right, 60 cars in our class there, ASCS National Tour, some of the toughest guys in the country are there racing, and had a great qualifying, ended up third quick in qualifying, and then went out there for the feature, or then went out there for the heat race, and it was definitely dry slick that night, it was definitely slicker than what we had been racing on previously, and I had a good run going in my heat race, I think I was running fourth, and I tapped the wall on the front straightaway and didn't tap it hard, but did just got my right rear up into the wall on the front straightaway. And then coming out of two, I must have cut my tire down when I tapped the wall because it just let go. And when it let go, it turned me into the fence and I absolutely clobbered the pit gate coming out of two, ripped the right rear wheel right off the car, tore up the top wing, the nose wing, ripped the right front shock off of it, bent the front axle back, but we never got it upside down. I stayed on the gas enough to keep the thing from grabbing and turning over. And there was only four or five lap, four laps I think left in the heat race. I got to that work area and we were under a yellow flag and the guys were able to put just a right rear tire on it. We went out there without a right front shock and with everything wounded up, was able to start last in that heat race and still got back up to transfer position into the A main. Unfortunately, it made us start 17th in that A main. It was a good night that we could have, we could have started really, really decent in that feature. Instead, we're starting clear to the back. And in that feature, we were okay. We, were, we weren't great. The cars wounded up a little bit. It had knocked the front end of the car over uh, about two inches. And unfortunately, we didn't know this at this point. Uh, we just put a front axle underneath it, 
when we got into the pit area, put wings on it and uh, some new shocks and was able to get going again. But I remember running up through there and I could see Clint Garner and Ryan Giles racing in front of me and was actually running those guys down. And we got to a point where we got spread out there just a little bit and I couldn't gain any more, but I wasn't losing anything. And I don't remember where Clint ran, if he ran eighth and I ran 11th uh, or what it was, but it was a pretty decent night for us for as bad as that night was. It could have been real bad on the start of that feature. Uh, a group of cars got together and basically just, just skimmed by. We should have been involved in the crash on the start of that. Uh, but we just made it through there and was able to salvage a decent night with a huge group of fast cars. You know, 360 Nationals, of course, we've had good runs at this 360 Nationals. I've ran second, I've ran a third, I've ran a fifth. I've, I've had a lot of A main finishes in this, but it's getting tougher and tougher with the field of cars that we have. So 360 Nationals come along and we unfortunately completely second-guessed ourselves all nationals. We missed in time trial so terribly bad. We had such a good time trial setup going and we decided that we were gonna change it up a little bit and we, we completely messed it up. And then we went out there for the feature and made it into the A main and went out there for the feature and we missed again and it was unfortunately just an error on our end we got the wrong right rear tire on it and we had, com uh, we had our stagger completely screwed up. We had more stagger in the A main than what we had ever ran in the hot laps or a time trials. And that's usually when you're starting to take stagger away is feature time and we just, we went completely the wrong way on an air. And we still had a decent finish on our qualifying night. Um, I think we ended up 10th in the A main there and would love to have been a lot better, but that put us in the B main for Saturday night, and that's not where we wanted to be, but we were up front in the B main. And, you know, anytime we can be up front in that B main, you know, you have great cars you gotta race against, but I think we can, I knew we could make it into that A main. And again, still at this point, we had a bent chassis and didn't know it. Um, it's, it's tough to tell these J&J &J cars are just, they're so strong of cars, this thing just had a bow in it. It didn't bend anything so bad that it kinked a, a bar or anything, it just bowed it. And we we're about two inches off on the front end of this car, which is, it's enough to affect and change the way everything's working. And yeah, and we started that B main and went backwards a little bit, but we we're still able to get through there and challenge on Saturday night for the A main. We're, we're in Saturday night's A main, and you know, we went at it, and we went at it hard for that A main, and just to show you the caliber of cars that we're racing against. This was like my ninth or 10th A main that I have made it for the 360 Nationals. I raced my tail off. I felt like I just went, went 10 rounds with a heavyweight racing against Danny Lasoski and Terry McCarl every stinking lap. We were, we were battling slide jobs back and forth. And, and then all of a sudden now we're, we're dealing with uh, the 27 car who had won the prelim night and you know, it just was, I felt we were as good as we possibly could be. We just started too far back. And we were racing with some of the best racers in the country. It, it just was one of those deals when you start clear back there, you're not gonna go forward with that caliber of cars. Yeah, so the final night of the season, we go in there and obviously nerves are high. You know, it was a deal after 360 Nationals where we're trying to figure out where we had failed. We're working on everything, put new birdcage bearings in everything, put new new spindles, uh, new front end underneath it, changed the rear end out to a, to a rear end that had no knights on it. We just, we went through everything because we knew we couldn't have a DNF that night. We also, were running wounded out there. I got upside down at the 410 Nationals and I had torn up my right elbow and I was struggling big time with my right arm. I just had no strength in it and it just, it throbbed all the time and felt like it was on fire. I broke a steering gear going down the, actually going into one on the heat race at the non-qualifiers night, but it hadn't broke completely yet. 
and finally down the back chute, this thing, I lost all steering, and I, the thing was like driving a, driving a wet noodle down the back stretch. I just could not get it aimed in the right direction, and I was steering it more with the pedals than anything, and finally I just decided to loop the thing around because there was no way it was going to make the turn, and I backed it up and got it upside down, and the thing came down real hard on the nose, and when it came down on the nose, I had a hold of the steering wheel probably a little too tight, and it tore some stuff in my elbow. And it wounded me up a little bit, and nothing major, but it, it was enough to where that last night, I, I didn't want anybody to know I was hurt going out there, but it was, it was definitely bothering me. It was bothering me huge. And we go out there, and we were eighth quick in time trials. We have a good run in our heat race, but we were 75 points up on Clint. And 75 points is not a lot. I mean, and it's, it's definitely a tough one when you're, you've got someone like him behind you and these guys were on kill, they're on cloud nine, they just won the 360 nationals and they might have us down a little bit at this point, but we still had that point lead. And we took off in that, that feature and I think we were even, maybe even, or I might've gained a point or two after the heat races uh, or went down a couple of points, but they didn't gain much on us in time trials and through the heat race, but into that feature, you know, I was way too cautious off the start. Um, Clint wasn't, Clint got a great jump, got up there, he was battling right there for third right off the bat. And then I ended up falling and falling and falling. And I don't know how far back I fell at one point, 11th or 12th. And I was completely out of the point lead at that point. Clint Garner had it completely sewed up and they had a restart. And on this restart, I mean, I, I had to talk to myself in my helmet and just, just talk myself into, you know, my elbow can hurt tomorrow, I just need to grab. And I was actually trying to steer one-handed. I was using my right hand just to steady the steering wheel and steering with my left. And, you know, we had that restart and it was a deal where it might not have stuck. I, I easily could have wanted that car up. I went on the outside of Tom Lins and Calvin Landis and was able to get by those two and then got up to Christian Bowman and got back by Christian and um, you know ended up finishing six that night and that definitely sewed it up for us and Clint did what Clint does he got up to second and he you know whether you're a Clint Garner fan or you're a Matt Morrow fan or who fan it was a great night of racing it was exciting and it was too exciting I didn't want it to be exciting I wanted it to be the most boring the A feature there with us out front leading the thing and just just in the in the season, but it did make it good for the fans. And you know, I was very very proud of our team and very proud of my dad and Howie and Kenny and Tyler. I mean, everybody that worked so hard on this deal. It just was a great moment for us to be able to to beat Clint. And I don't think Clint's been beat as long as he's been racing for points in the 360 class. The first one was was awesome. Uh, I won that championship in 2008. It was my first one. It was my my second year owning my own race team. So that was that was really neat. But my dad had went away in about 2010, and he was doing his own deal and racing these dirt trucks, and he wasn't helping me any longer. This one by far, you know, with the competition, beating Clint and Ryan Giles. I mean, these are two guys that are, are so tough there week in and week out. And, you know, we, we were able to get it done. Uh, we, put a, we put a great year together. We had one DNF. We had a, a whole bunch of quick times. We had a lot of, of A main podium finishes. And that's what it took to win a championship was just to be there and be, be a contender every single night. Uh, this season wouldn't have been what it was without any of my crew guys. If one of them was missing, we would not be sitting as the 2017 point champion, um, especially without my dad and Howie. I mean, those two are the, the two most important people on this race team to me. You know, Howie is, is my best friend in the whole world, and my dad is the guy that keeps me, keeps me focused. He just, he tells me I've got the best race car every single night I go on the track, and he put the best setup on it. I don't know if he believes that himself every night, and uh, but he makes me believe it, and it gives my confidence up every time I go out there. But what he has done is, is he has given me one of the better race cars every single night uh, to go out there and race. So, and then with Kenny and Tyler, you know, these two guys, Tyler, it's his first year helping us this year. Uh, Johnny Anderson uh, had taught him, and Jack Anderson, and taught him well. He's a he's a guy we wouldn't want to go racing without. 
uh, we, we want to keep him here. He's a great tire guy. He's just he's an all-around good guy and great help in the pit area. So you know, and J and J chassis. You know, Bonnie and Jack give me a great chassis uh, to work with here. You know, they they give me a lot of tech help. You know, and Clint even went to J&J chassis there towards the end of the season. Jamie Moyle builds us a strong engine and a very reliable engine. You know, that's that's one of the things, but these sponsors too. We can't make it out here without the sponsors. All the way from my dad, Carl Moyer, Carl Chevrolet, Casey's General Store, The Rib Shack, Keller & Associates, Scrap Processors of Iowa. You know, we've, we've got Academy Roofing on there. We've got a lot of, a lot of great ones. Phillips Floors, um, Des Moines Industrial, uh, products, you know, we've got great people involved in this team and that's, that's what makes this so much fun and why we keep doing it. My outlook for 2018, let's do it again, but let's win some features this year. You know, that's, that's always what we're, we're going out to do. You know, I've, I've always said these points will figure themselves out. I hate racing for points. I, we're just going to have fun and that's the whole deal. We got all of our sponsors back aboard that were on there with, uh, with a new one of Cruz Construction. And we got nice race cars again. We got good motors. We've got the same crew, you know. So I don't see any reason why we can't do it. But we need to have feature wins. If we win every feature out there, the points will will pan out our way. But it, we've got to win. We it was a lucky season last year to be able to not win a feature and be on the the winning end of the championship.